Oh no! Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Now, today, we're going to do a little bit of upcycling. Who has furniture that they don't want anymore? Lots of people. Who has friends that have furniture that don't want it anymore? Even better. Free wood. We love free wood. So you might have an old coffee table. It's a bit scratched. It's a bit unloved. Always take it. Strip it apart. You get a nice big chunk of wood. You might get some turned legs that you can use for something. Just a matter of dismantling it and turning it into something different. So we're going to take this old coffee table and we're going to turn it into a, a child's stool that can go into a, a nice nursery somewhere. We might use some of the original features. We might put some features of our own in, but that's up to you. What would you have and what design you want to make? So let's dive in and see how we do it. So dismantling whatever it is that you've got your hands on uh, sometimes can be a simple matter of just unscrewing uh, some sections. Other times when it's built a little bit better, it might come with the dowels. Uh, and a little bit of knocking generally gets that off quite cleanly. Occasionally it will tear sections off, but there's not a great deal we can do when it's been glued in. Uh, that's as good as we can get. But all that means is we have that much space to work with. So the first part is deciding how big we want this to be. So I've roughly set out these legs in a triangle because we're going to have the three of them. I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing my head straight down the centre at the minute just to have a quick look and decide what kind of size circle because these are quite chunky posts. So I'm thinking to get all of those in at any angle we're going to want probably about the length of the ruler, so about 300 mil, 30 centimetres. So then, all we need to do then is a trusty old screw through a stick and then mark off half that distance to drill a hole that we can put our pencil through. Now, I've put this screw in here, but notice I'm only just poking out the other side. So that's going to be enough to grip into the wood so we can draw a nice circle, but it's not going to put a great big hole in it. I'm also doing it on the back section where that's not going to be seen. I don't want to put extra dents in the top that I'm going to have to plane out later. So now that we've got the bulk of this square cut out, we now need to make it circular. Now, yes, we could go at it with a jigsaw, um, and buzz round it, make lots of dust and noise, but I don't want to. And you might not have a jigsaw, you might only have a handsaw. So we're basically just going to chop the corners off with the handsaw. If there's any kind of larger lumps, you might get rid of those as well. We can draw a straight line on just to help guide us. What I do want to do is keep away from that circle a little bit for now. So we notice as we just rough cut through there, it chips off really easily. Um, and I don't particularly want those chips to go into this face side of the circle. Now we're going to chamfer that off, but it's easier for one of these chips to just be that little bit too big. So all I'm going to do is if that's the, the edge of the circle, I'm going to go in a little bit from there and then we can just chop that corner off from there. So now that we've roughed out that shape, I'm then going to smooth it off with the chisel to get closer to the line as we go around. Still thinking about the grain of the wood here. Uh, if you think back to the carving videos that we did earlier on, I'll put a link in the description for those, making sure we always chisel downhill in relation to the grain. So I can go down that way. I don't want to come up this way because it will split those sections off. <coughs> If I take a little bit like that, you can see that wants to split. Well, I predicted that that would go across that way, so that's all right. But 
I certainly wouldn't want to go any lower down because that split would go across into the section that I want to keep. So here we're going to go from this point down there and then keep turning around, coming in this direction, turning the piece upside down and working our way all the way around. Now to get that nice and flat and smooth, I could keep going with the chisel, maybe taking whispers off each time, just pushing it through, a nice sharp chisel will do that. But it's taking tiny bites off and there's too much flexibility on there. I could use my plane, so I could go with it. And again, it would do a very similar job to the chisel. I might even skew it to get a finer cut. And that might work as we go through and you're just following that curve you can hear it you can feel when that blade catches but it's a little bit cumbersome so we go for one of these this is a spoke shave okay uh, there's millions of them around you can get them off ebay you can buy new ones but the, the old ones are good um, and these work the same way as the plane, but they're just a little bit more manageable, easier to hold. So we just start to take it through. And taking it round, and that just gives us a nice flatter surface. So then we can work our way around all the way through, effectively on all four corners. Now continuing to work with the spoke shiv, and I want to round off this corner, because it's really sharp, so I want to curve that over. So what I'm going to do is going to take the pencil, and just set a little line all the way around the edge. It's going to be about a quarter inch, something like that. So I've got something to work through all the way around. Just do that all the way around the edge. And then the same distance along that edge as well. So without moving my finger, I know that that's setting the same distance. So I've got a nice line to work to to get me an even curve all the way around. I'll probably take off half of that amount so I've half the distance between the corner and the pencil line on both sides. You can see I'm nearly going uphill there. And once I've done that, it's just then a matter of going through and rounding over on both sides. If you think of the name of spoke shave, these were originally invented for creating spokes. Nice rounded things from square sticks. It's just exactly what we're doing on the edge of here. That's got a really lovely round section to it now. So there we go, one nicely cut out round section ready for a stool top. So we sorted the edges out. What about that top finish now? Now you could leave that varnish on, and I've done plenty of these kind of restoring and reusing of wood where I've done that. It might be the colour and the texture that I want to keep. But with this one, I want to get rid of that because I want to use a pyrography pen to write in a name and maybe even draw a little animal or something like that to go in the nursery. Now there's a number of different ways that we can remove that. An obvious way is just to get a great big fat belt sander out and just go at it. It'll give you a perfectly good, smooth, beautiful, clean result. But that's got to be used in a well ventilated area, even with a, a face mask on, eye protection, ear protection. Blech. Don't like them. So the other ways that we can do it, we could use a hand plane on a really fine setting. We might be able to just skim that varnish layer off the top. The trouble with that though, 
is because this is made out of individual planks that have been glued together when it was a coffee table, I don't know which way around all of those grain patterns are going. So it might run smooth on some of those sections, but it might pull on others. And I don't want to take that risk. So here's the other option that we've got. It's called a cabinet scraper. These things are fantastic. Also known as a Stanley number 80. If you want to try and hunt one of these down, they're superb things. What this can do is skim and scrape. Rather than slice, it scrapes. So irrespective of which way the grain's running, it gives us a beautiful flat result that will need very minimal sanding at the end to finish it off. One finished top, smoothed out top and bottom. And now for the legs. You, know, you should always put your tools back where they should normally live and you're not trying to hunt them around. But we're all too jolly lazy for that. Right, so once we've marked off that 30 centimetres or 12 inches, whichever you prefer, I'm just going to eyeball straight. Okay, so I'm just looking at the angle of that. Because this splays out, I can't use a set square or anything like that. So I can just look at roughly where square looks to me and then make sure my saw is running up as this is running vertical. Not truly important because these legs are going to splay out a little bit as well. They're not going to run down perfectly straight. So we need to do that with the other two. So those can be thrown away. We don't need those anymore. Unless you can find a fantastic use for a two-sided piece that looks a bit like that without the ugly bits on. For me, I'm going to be ruthless and throw them out. Twenty points. So here's a neat trick for splitting this into three uh, very equal parts. <clears throat> without having to measure anything, we can use our uh, piece of wood with a screw in it that we actually use to mark off the circle with using exactly the same dimensions. So I've still got my little dot in the middle, this is upside down, so I've still got my dot in the middle, I am going to draw a straight line straight through the centre from top to bottom, all the way through like that. Now by using this marker again, what I can do now is at this bottom edge where I drew my line is where that pivot's going to go. So I can put that on there and then my pencil will mark off as it comes around that point there and that point there. Now all I have to do now is again go from those new marks into that centre point. Like that. So that one, and then from there into the centre, that one. A presto, that is marked off in three perfectly equal sections. I'm just going to go again a kind of arbitrary distance, about an inch and a bit, something like that. I'm just going to use a finger point to mark that in, like that, and the same on that one. There we go. Right. So now I can drill the holes in those three sections, knowing that those legs are going to be evenly spaced. Now to drill these holes in, what I'm not going to do is drill in at 90 degrees, because I want these legs to just very slightly splay out. It's going to make it a little bit more stable. Um, it doesn't need to be by much. So I found a scrap piece of wood that actually has about the right angle on it. Um, that's about 80 degrees. Instead of 90, we'll just knock a little bit off, about 80 degrees. All I'm going to do is cut a little V out of that face so that as I then rest my drill upon that, it's going to come through and mark off at the right angle. And with the little V, it just helps the drill bit stay in place as I guide it in. There we go.
Right, now I'm going to stop there and I'll show you what's going on on the other side. There, so we can now see the end of that screw just poking out there and that's where I'm going to stop. Because what I want to do now is take the drill and come in from this side to again get a really nice clean cut on this top side. We've got a beautiful hole that goes right the way through, nice clean edge on both sides that's got just the right angle for the leg to come out. So here I've just put a, a little X cross in the middle of the circle. So then I can lay this on top. Can you just see in there? You can spot the X in the middle of there. So again, you just kind of eyeball that. So that's going to be central. Right, just to hold that flat in place there. And then with a nice sharp pencil that's got a good point on it, you can get right in those edges and go around that circle that you've drilled out. Use that as your template. So that gives us the circle that we want in there. Now, what we don't want to do is go straight up to that pencil line because there's a good chance it will chip in a little bit thin. So we're going to keep that pencil line for definite as we chip away the major part. I've put a pencil line around the edge here, a little bit thicker than the stool top. So I'm going to saw through there first. Little strip. Hold that up to that circular pencil line I've got, certainly no deeper than that. And then we can put the tape on there and then just try and get it level. So I know in, in that middle part where I stuck it is the correct distance. So I'm just going to finagle that a little bit. I do like that word finagling. I don't know where I've picked that up from, but I love it. And there we go. We have a rough depth stop. So I can now saw all the way around here, keep into that line. So then we can just go into there a little bit at a time, not taking the full depth off straight away. So kind of taking about that much off half, half the distance. Usually when we chip away stuff, whether we're doing mortise and tenons, check the link for the video down below for that. Anytime you chip in waste off, just keep halving the distance then you don't get a lot of unexpected problems. It would be very easy as we go around here to find that some of the grain on this wood dives in towards that base, which isn't what we're after at all. So looking at that, actually that seems to be running fairly straight. So I'll half that distance again. And again, always making sure on here that we're not going to get rid of that pencil line. We might go close to it, but we are definitely not going to get rid of it. Could have done this again with the saw. Doesn't really make a difference. on that far edge just so I don't have to bother moving because we all get lazy don't we and I would never want to try and use the chisel pointing against myself so you would never come in like this because all that would take is to slip and nasty things are going to happen always thinking about yourself and your safety all the way through so that's definitely not going to fit in there. It's a bit too wide. It's a bit too big. It's, it's getting close. Looking at it from different sides. Yeah, we're not far off in some directions, a little bit closer in others. 
So I am just going to keep going like this, doing these little bits here. And this really is shaving down to that pencil line now. So let's offer that up again. And we're not. Oh, that's close. It really is close. Right, what I'm going to do now. So I'm not going to think about full lengths. I'm literally going to take off that pencil line as an edge just to heal just to place it into the hole all right so i'm literally just skimming off that corner section now really really just taking the corners off So now we have a hole and we can see that we can we can push that just into that hole now. So a little bit of turning. We'll just start to pry that in a little bit at a time. And that's a really beautiful snug fit. So that's getting us in there. So you see that's popped us through to that top section. It's not fully in yet. You can see on the back side how we've got that gap, but that, that's a good tight fit. That's what we're looking for. Actually go in with a pencil now. And kind of mark off where level is. So we've got a bottom edge along here. And I can go through and mark off that distance on this close side here. And then we can level that all off. time so again i'm going to use that trusty pencil trick and say i want to round over about that much there we go. again so that distance is about the same as that matching those up so we get a nice rounded edge over like that and i'm going to use the chisel to do that taking about half of it off first So once you've taken that corner off, I can then just go in and again, just kind of trimming the corner sections off each time. So that even with a flat chisel, we can make a beautiful curve. So there we go. That's how we can make uh, nice rounded off corners with a flat chisel. You can do an awful lot with a flat chisel. So we're now going to just need to go through and sand that off. Okay, so we can sand off the edges to make them super smooth. We then need to sand all this off. Um, there's no really easy way to do that. We don't have a lathe. We're not going to do it with that. So it is a matter of, of getting in there with a sandpaper. Now what we might be able to do is use one of these. Now this is sandpaper that's attached to a fabric and this is actually made for a finger sander so it's like a belt sander but really narrow and occasionally they'll snap now i never throw those out because these become useful for sanding off stuff like this so we can hold it in the vise and then holding the two we can rub this backwards and forwards and it'll take off the edge for us getting into these deeper sections here can be a little bit tricky but actually quite often I don't do that. I actually leave a little bit in there because it just makes it look a little bit worn in. It gives it a nice texture. So that's the next challenge. A little bit of sanding on all three legs and then we need to fit it together with those wedges.
Right, so now the glue up, we've made our wedges, we've got our little tiny slits put in the top, so what I'm going to do now is just spread some glue all the way around that edge, spread it around my finger a little bit, and put some on the top just to start pushing it down into that crack. Don't worry about having glue on the top, this will need smoothing out anyway. And then we can put that in there. Beautiful. And I've lined up, the way that I've cut this is that the lines will always cut in towards the centre there. Okay, now I'm going to do that with all three to begin with, then I'll drive the wedges in. Which means that's a bit of a pig to just sit there. <laughs> Right, so that gets that sat. It's not quite as firm as the other two, but it will be by the time we're finished. And then we can, where's the mallet gone? Put the wedges in. Alright, let's really crack those in place. Really quite sturdy already, all three. Nice and lovely and sturdy, that's gorgeous. So there you go, we've got a free chunk of wood and turned it into something really pretty. So we made that stool, I've put a little personalisation with the pyrography on the top. I might have a video about pyrography soon on a, on a Tuesday tips, that would be good wouldn't it? Uh, so we made that. Now I decided to go ahead and make a square version, okay, so the top's on the end of here. There we are. Uh, just using mortise and tendon techniques to put that leg in there because it's quite a thick top. That's more than strong enough on there on a short stool. It doesn't really need the bracing underneath. So you can just use mortise and tenon. And again, I've just kind of spliced it through there as well. If you're not sure about mortise and tenons, check the link in the video below for my mortise and tenon video. Okay. Uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. What would you make out of some scrap pieces of furniture? So until next time, sharpen your tools and I'll see you soon.